My aunt made me babysit my niece for free because family helps family, but when I asked her for a loan during a tough time, she laughed in my face. Then she lost everything, and I had the chance to turn the tables. All right, let me set the scene for you. It's 7.30 a.m. on a Saturday, and I'm sitting on my couch, deep in the couch crevices like I'm part of the furniture. I've got a half-eaten bowl of cereal on my lap, and I'm just about to dive into my weekend routine of absolute nothingness when the phone rings. It's my Aunt Lisa. Now, I should have known better. I did know better. But for some stupid reason, my brain decided to pick up the phone anyway. Like a moth to a flame or a dumb guy to a multi-level marketing scheme, I answered. Hey, it's your favorite aunt, she chirped. That was red flag number one. If she was calling to tell me I'd won the lottery or inherited a mysterious fortune, it'd be straight to the point. But no, this was sweet Aunt Lisa, and that meant she was about to ask for something. Hey, Aunt Lisa. What's up? I said, knowing full well I was about to regret this. So, little Natalie has ballet practice today, but I've got this super important spa day with the girls, and you know, family helps family, right? Ah, yes. Family helps family. Those three little words that, in my family, translate to, you're about to be volunteered for free labor. She needed a babysitter. For her five-year-old demon, sorry, I mean daughter, Natalie. I won't lie, I love the kid, but her attention span is roughly the same length as a TikTok, and her energy? The same level as a squirrel on meth. I'll owe you one, she sang into the phone before I could even form a response, and just like that, I was roped in. Babysitting for Aunt Lisa wasn't exactly what I had planned for my Saturday, but I thought, whatever, maybe I'll cash in this favor someday. Boy, was I wrong. So fast forward through that day of shrill screams, glitter explosions and me trying to explain for the fifteenth time why she couldn't eat play dough, and I finally hand Natalie back to Aunt Lisa when she returns, refreshed from her super important spa day. Thank you so much, sweetie, she said in that syrupy voice of hers. Remember, family helps family. I nodded, exhausted, and then she sped off, probably to go drink mimosas somewhere, leaving me standing there like a schmuck. But fine, whatever. I didn't really need to be compensated. I thought, one day when I'm in a tight spot, she'll return the favor. Spoiler alert, I was wrong again. A few months later, life decided to kick me square in the nuts. My job tanked, bills piled up, and I was pretty much couch surfing between my friend's place and my parents' basement. It was the kind of rough patch where you're seriously considering selling your kidney on the black market. Things were desperate. And then it hit me. Family helps family, right? So, I sucked up my pride and called Aunt Lisa. Hey Aunt Lisa, it's me. Listen, I'm kind of in a bind. I lost my job and... Oh, that's too bad, sweetie. She cut me off, sounding barely interested. I could hear the clinking of ice in a glass. She was probably lounging by her pool or drinking some ridiculous artisan cocktail. But what can you do, right? Life's tough sometimes. I tried to stay patient. Yeah, it's been pretty tough. I was wondering if you could help me out. I only need like a small loan to get back on my feet. She cackled. She actually cackled. Like I'd just told her a joke about a nun and a goat walking into a bar. Oh honey, I would love to help, but you know how it is, she said, not even pretending to feel bad. We've all got our own problems and money's tight. You understand, right? I'm sure you'll figure something out. Maybe try one of those Uber things? I couldn't believe it. This was the same woman who, not too long ago, had me watching her kid for free while she blew hundreds on spa treatments. Family helps family? Yeah, right. At that point, I knew one thing for sure. Aunt Lisa was trash, and the next time she needed me for anything, I was going to laugh just as hard in her face. Now, here's where things get good. Life went on, and while I wasn't exactly thriving, I was surviving. After a few months of struggle, I found a decent job and got back on my feet. Things were looking up, and I thought the worst was behind me. But oh, karma? Karma was just getting started. And let me tell you, when karma hits, it hits like a wrecking ball. About a year later, I got a frantic call from Aunt Lisa. Sweetie, I need your help, she sobbed. Everything's falling apart. Apparently her husband, who, by the way, was one of those sleazy guys who always talked about his next big deal, had been cooking the books at his job. Something about shady investments and offshore accounts, basically. The financial equivalent of juggling flaming swords while blindfolded. Long story short, the whole thing blew up in his face, and now they were broke. Like, sell your pool furniture and auction off your jewellery broke. The cherry on top? 
They were losing their house too. The house with the pool where she probably sipped mojitos while telling me to try Uber. Aunt Lisa, that's terrible, I said, trying my hardest to sound concerned while internally doing a victory lap. What do you need? We've got nowhere to go. The bank's taking the house and we're, we're homeless, she wailed dramatically. I need a place to stay just for a few weeks until we get back on our feet. You know, family helps family. Ah, there it was again. The magic words. Now, the pettier part of me wanted to laugh in her face, hang up the phone and frame the moment in my mind like a piece of art. But I'm not a total monster, so I told her I'd think about it and give her a call back. I immediately texted my buddies. We all agreed this was the chance of a lifetime to turn the tables, and I was going to milk it for all it was worth. I called Aunt Lisa back the next day. All right, you guys can stay with me, I said, barely suppressing my glee. But there are a couple of conditions. Of course, anything, she said, desperate as ever. Condition one, she and her family were to stay in the spare bedroom, the tiny one. You know, the one where the bed was just a step above an air mattress. The room was barely big enough for one person, let alone three. And I was more than happy to let her know that there was no way her husband and Natalie could fit in there comfortably. But hey, family helps family, right? Condition two, they would contribute to the house by doing chores. I told Aunt Lisa, with my best straight face, that I'd been struggling to keep up with housework since I was working full-time, and I would really appreciate her pitching in. You know, like how I pitched in for you with babysitting? She didn't like that one, but she had no choice. For the first time in her life, Aunt Lisa was scrubbing my toilet. I could have cried tears of joy. And finally, condition three, rent. Yep, you heard me. I told her that even though they were family, family helps family after all, and with me getting back on my feet, I really couldn't afford to support them entirely. They'd need to chip in for groceries and utilities. You should have seen the look on her face when I said that. It was like I'd just asked her to donate a kidney, but after all her protests, she had nowhere else to go. She had to agree. So there they were, my high and mighty Aunt Lisa, her clueless husband, and poor little Natalie all cramped in my tiny spare bedroom, cleaning my house and paying me rent. Oh, how the tables had turned. It was glorious. Every morning, Aunt Lisa would drag herself out of bed to do whatever chore I'd left for her that day, all while her husband tried to figure out how to reclaim their former lifestyle. Spoiler, he never did. Natalie ran wild, but I made sure to remind Aunt Lisa that family helps family when she asked for breaks. One day, as she was scrubbing the bathroom floor, Aunt Lisa looked up at me exhausted and said, You know, I never realized how hard it was for you back then. I smiled. Yeah, it's tough when you're struggling, isn't it? But hey, we all have our problems. You'll figure something out. Maybe try one of those Uber things. She didn't laugh this time. But I did. Eventually, Aunt Lisa and her family managed to scrape together enough money to get a small apartment. They never quite bounced back to their old lifestyle, though. And I don't think Aunt Lisa will ever forget what it was like to live on the other side of Family Helps Family. She's quieter now, humble even. When we see each other at family gatherings, because let's face it, you can't entirely cut family off, there's always this awkward little tension between us. She doesn't make demands anymore. She doesn't ask for favours either. And most importantly, she doesn't drop that Family Helps Family line like it's a magic spell to get her way. The funny thing is, after all this, I've come to a weird kind of peace with Aunt Lisa. Don't get me wrong, I'm still petty. If she ever crosses me again, I've got a whole arsenal of jokes ready to fire. But after living with her, after seeing her world come crumbling down and how she had to swallow her pride, I realised something. Karma doesn't just punish people, it teaches them. Aunt Lisa's world had always been about living above everyone else, using people without thinking about their struggles. But now, every time she looks at me across the table during Thanksgiving dinner or sends me a polite text asking how I'm doing, I know she's thinking about the time she had to scrub my toilet. I know she remembers what it felt like to be at rock bottom, asking for help and being at the mercy of someone else. And sure, I could have been kinder. I could have forgiven her right away, maybe even given her a free pass after that whole babysitting fiasco. But sometimes, the universe doesn't need a nice guy. It needs a guy who's willing to hold up a mirror and make someone like Aunt Lisa see what they've become. So now, when I think back to those days of watching Natalie for free while Aunt Lisa sipped cocktails by her pool, I laugh. Not because I was ever really paid back for my time or my help, but because Aunt Lisa finally learned that in this family.
You can only ride the family helps family train for so long before it derails and smacks you right in the face. Besides, I'll always have that mental image of Aunt Lisa scrubbing my bathroom floor to keep me warm at night. Postscript, funny thing though, after the whole ordeal was over, Natalie, now six, asked me one day, why did mommy clean your house when you don't have a pool? I didn't have the heart to explain the complexities of karma to a kid, so I just said, because sometimes adults have to do things they don't like. And with that, she shrugged and went back to playing with her glittery play-doh, blissfully unaware that her family's world had flipped upside down and her mom was at the mercy of someone she'd once written off. But, to be honest, sometimes I wonder if Natalie will remember these days when she grows up, when she sees how easily fortunes can change and how you should never treat people like stepping stones, even if they are family. And maybe, just maybe, she'll learn from her mother's mistakes. As for me, I'm just sitting here, sipping a cold beer, enjoying the peace and quiet of my sparkling clean house. Aunt Lisa and her family may have finally moved into their own tiny apartment, but the memory of her scrubbing my bathroom floor will always bring a smile to my face. Because in the end, what goes around really does come around. And sometimes, it's worth waiting for.